About 12 years ago, I went on a flight in a Cessna with my ex-father-in-law, who was a private pilot, and he was probably in his late 60s at that time. And one of the thoughts that I had when I was going up was, what if he falls unconscious? What if he has a heart attack while we're in the air? What would I do? Obviously, I had no experience flying. So that thought was in the back of my head during the flight. In the On a Wing and a Prayer movie, Dennis Quaid's character, Doug White, is thrust into that situation when the pilot of the plane he's on dies of sudden cardiac death, which is similar to a heart attack. Doug White is forced to take the controls and try to pilot the plane, a King Air 200. What you're about to listen to is the audio that was released of Doug White's communication with the air traffic controllers. What you'll notice while listening to the audio is that Doug White in real life was far more focused than Dennis Quaid's character is in the film. He was also far calmer than Dennis Quaid's character, who in the film seems like he's about to go into shock at times or have a heart attack himself. In researching the On a Wing and a Prayer true story, we actually discovered that one of the air traffic controllers described the real Doug White as being like the coldest cucumber throughout the intense ordeal. This is significantly different from Quaid's character in the film. Another difference worth pointing out prior to listening to Doug White's communication with air traffic control is that the real Doug White had significantly more experience as a pilot. The movie depicts Doug White as taking a single lesson during which he performs horribly and nearly crashes the plane the instructor's forced to take over the controls. The true story reveals that the real Doug White had started taking flying lessons all the way back in 1989 and had gotten his pilot's license in 1990. He said that he then gave up flying because he didn't have enough money to fly two to three times a week in order to stay sharp. At that point, he had logged 83 or 84 hours of flying in a Cessna 172, a single engine plane. 18 years passed before he decided to take up flying again in January 2009 several months before the incident. By the time Easter rolled around, he had logged about 40 to 45 hours of flying, again in a Cessna 172. While this plane is significantly smaller and easier to fly than the King Air 200 he's forced to take over, clearly the movie is downplaying his experience to heighten the tension. I hope this gives you some better perspective as you now listen to the real Doug White's communication with air traffic control. Miami Center, King Air 559 Delta Whiskey. Air 559 Delta Whiskey, Miami Center. Here's your loud and clear. How many? I got declared an emergency. My pilot is unconscious. I need help up here. I need to get this thing on the ground. I'm flying to King Air. My pilot's deceased. I am a single engine pilot, low time. Hello, Miami 49. I need help. I need a King Air pilot to talk to. All right, uh, all aircraft stand by. Air 559 Delta Whiskey. And uh, are, are you uh, at the cockpit now? I am go pilot seat. Get him out. Air 9 or Delta Whiskey, understand you are able to fly an aircraft? Single engine, I need to get off this. Uh, I'm going through 11,000. I need to get level. Air 9 or Delta Whiskey, uh, are you able to uh, maintain 1, 2,000? Do I turn off the altimeter or not? It's steady climbing, and my but looks to me like my uh, altitude of descent is on 10,000. I don't know why I keep going climbing. Get me to figure out how to level off. You think the autopilot is on? I know it's on. The altitude set is 10,000, but I'm going through 13 now. It should have leveled off at 10, so how do I stop that is what I want to know. I'm already busted 10,000. I'm steady climbing. I need to stop the climb. Right, stay with me, Miami. Let's go. Uh, 5959 or Delta Whiskey, I'm here. Don't worry. Uh, we're trying to find a solution to that. Uh, stand by. For me on the 50. Okay, number 5 uh, Delta Whiskey. When you look at the center console there, you don't see anything with the ETM? You see the autopilot unable to disengage? Uh, I don't know. I know where the dotted pilot switch is down there. It's, under, it's on engage right now. I can engage it if you uh, disengage it. That's fine. Five Delta Whiskey. Yeah, no disengage problem. the autopilot. We're going to have you. We're going to have you hand fly the plane. Okay, hold the yoke level. Disengage the autopilot. Uh, I disengaged it. I'm flying the airplane by hand. You find me the longest, the widest runway you can, ma'am. Now, if I've got the whiskey, Roger, I'm going to try to keep you hold the, the plane level. You're doing pretty good, 17,000 to one. Try to hold the plane now at 17,000. All right, number five, Delta Whiskey. We're going to start a slow, shallow descent. 
percent. Just easy down on the yoke. A slight percent. We're going to get you down to one one eleven thousand. Pull back. Pull back slightly on the throttle and just ease over the yoke gently. Whatever you're comfortable with, we'll just try to make a nice shallow five hundred feet per minute descent. I got it at 1,000 feet per second. Number five Delta Whiskey, that's, that's fantastic. Nine or Delta Whiskey, straight ahead on the heading of, uh, oh, about 35. 636, contact mine at this 133.77. Hi, y'all, good luck. Okay, number five Delta Whiskey, you doing all right there, descending? Oh, we're having a hoot, Nine or Delta Whiskey, 16,000, uh, 11,000 uh, foot per minute descent, Nine or Delta Whiskey. Okay, number nine, or de number nine or Delta Whiskey, just so you know what we're doing here, we're going to get you down to 1-1,000. We're going to make you get, give you a turn to the west. We're going to hand you off to Fort Myers Approach, and they've got some uh, controllers there that also have pilot experience, and they're going to talk you all the way in down to the landing there. Do you have any experience in uh, a King Air? Negative. Nine, number five, Delta Whiskey, you're doing a real good job. Just keep you doing a, right, a very good uh, holding your heading, a real nice descent there. Okay, number five, Delta Whiskey, just a nice, easy turn to the left. Whatever you're comfortable, real shallow, real gentle on the controls. You're going to turn left, fly a heading of uh, about a 270 heading, and continue that descent down to 1-1000, one, one whatever you're comfortable with. And number five, Delta Whiskey, just, just to put your mind at ease, there's good weather at uh, Fort Myers. There's no, uh, no weather in the way it's CFR. Okay, number five, Delta Whiskey. Just so you know the plan, we're going to bring you around to Fort Myers. They've got the longer runway, and uh, we're going to get you uh, the most uh, available runway for your landing. You're going to do fine. You got any questions about what you're doing right now? Are you okay? Yeah, we're great. Connor Delta Whiskey, thank you. Okay, number five, Delta Whiskey. Real nice job in that turn there, and you're going to be talking to Fort Myers Approach here in just a minute. Like I said, they're going to take their time and talk to you and get you down safe. It will be 132. Point zero seven. Let me see if I can find it without screwing this up. Can I set this altitude set at 11,000 and turn the autopilot back on? Number five, Delta Whiskey, if, if you would uh, like, you, you're, if that makes you more comfortable, you can do that. I can't do it. It messes up my heading. Number five, Delta Whiskey, Roger. It's probably, there's a, there's a little bug for the heading that you can uh, twist over uh, to get established with the autopilot. But why don't we, you're doing such a good job here hand flying. Why don't we keep you um, on that heading? You're doing well, and we'll level. It looks like you're just about level at 1-1,000 one, one there, holding it well. And now if you can, it's going to be 132.07. So what I'm going to do, number five Delta Whiskey, is contact Fort Myers Approach 132.07 by pushing two. If you have, if you do not get them, just switch it again, and you'll be talking to me. Fort Myers Center, King Air 559 Delta Whiskey. King Air 559 Delta Whiskey, Fort Myers Approach. And uh, are you in the descent right now, sir? I uh, am. Yeah, what you want me to do is hold it or what? Actually, if you can. Um, we can just start a descent down to 5,000, and we're getting some help uh, from another pilot that's familiar with the airplane. We'll get you some information. Can you descend the airplane? I can, down to 5,000 on heading 270. This is a King Air uh, 200. And November 9, your Delta Whiskey. Are you using the autopilot, or are you flying the airplane? Me and the good Lord hand flying this 900 Delta Whiskey. Okay, very good. Thank you. I need to slow my descent down. That's 2,500 feet per minute here. I need to get my throttle set for this descent. I don't know where to, know where to set it at. Nine Delta Whiskey, uh, the information I have is to pre-select the, uh, pre the autopilot to 5,000, but don't turn it on yet. You can go to the center console on the instrument panel and pre-select 5,000 feet, but uh, don't engage it yet, and I'll get you an information on how to do that. I got a pretty altitude set of 5,000. I know how to engage it, but I got to get rid of the heading bug that's hooked to this autopilot. I'm 150 knots. I need to keep installing this airplane. I'm just going through a little descent here. Okay, sir, just uh, advance the throttles, and uh, your altitude's good, so I guess just pick up the speed with the throttles and try to hold 5,000 feet. And nine dollar whiskey. The uh, the information I'm getting now is to leave the uh, props and the power where it's at, and just fly like you normally would a single engine for now. You got any alarms or warnings going off? Oh, just heavy trim. How many souls on board? I'm sorry. Five. Now they're telling me the trim control is on the yoke, and it's on the left-hand side of the yoke where the thumb would be, on the upper left-hand side of the yoke for uh, trim. I understand. And uh, nine Delta Whiskey, just want to verify you do have the autopilot off. 
I got the two black buttons on disengaged, which is down on the console. Okay, sir, thank you. Hold the gear for just a moment. Oh, I was going to. I'm just telling you, I know where the gear control is. What nine or Delta whiskey? Okay, that's good. That's good information. Do you know where the flap control handle is? I do. I don't know what uh, setting to put them on. Hey, we're getting that information right now. They're listening to you. Yeah, nine or Delta whiskey. It'll be runway six. It's a twelve thousand foot runway, so you're gonna have plenty of runway to work with. And we got equipment standing by, and uh, it's all yours. If we're looking for 160 knots indicated, you can start the gear down. Right now, I'm showing you ground speed right at 160 knots. I think I see a runway at 12 o'clock and about 7, 8 miles, 9 Delta Whiskey. 9 Delta Whiskey, that's correct. You're looking at the right runway. That's runway 6 at International, and uh, you're about a 15-mile final now. So have you got the gear going down yet, sir? Negative. I'm descending. I need to uh, get the, down to 2,000 and... Uh, Get my speed down, nine of Delta Whiskey. Nine Delta Whiskey, uh, the last instruction I got, when you get to 150 knots, the flap control will say approach flaps on there. Just select that detent when you get to 150 knots. 2,800, nine of Delta Whiskey, 165 indicated. Sounds good. You're right on the money. You're lined up for the runway, so altitude, your discretion. You can proceed visually and just let me know when you have the gear and the flaps down. All right, gear going down. When I touch down, if I ever touch down, do I just kill the throttle or what? That's correct. When you touch down, slowly uh, kill the throttle. Got dead pilots inside me. And nine Delta Whiskey, you don't have to respond. More information, once you make it onto the ground, just uh, center line with the rudder pedals. You kill the throttle and maximum braking. I keep this pilot off the control. You have plenty of runway, sir, so if you got to add a lot of power to make the threshold, that's fine. you got 12,000 feet of runway. It looks good from here. Good job. It ain't over till it's over, friend. Nine Delta Whiskey, uh, the runway's all yours. You can uh, turn left or right, whatever's easier for you. Power all the way back, and they're telling me max braking. We're down, buddy. Thank you. Nice work. Now, having listened to Doug White's communication with air traffic control, you might be asking yourself, what happened to the second attempt? In the movie, he makes a first attempt where he hits a crosswind, which rotates his plane sideways too much, and he has to abort that attempt. Then he flies into the storm and he has to come back around for another landing attempt. In real life, there was no storm. And you can hear that in the communication where she says, you have great weather. And there was actually no wind at all when Doug White landed the plane in real life. He did so on his first attempt and it was actually one of Doug White's best landings. It was a greaser, to be honest, he said. It didn't jump or skip. He set the plane down and it stopped in 3,500 feet or less. Now, something interesting to note about runway six at Fort Myers International Airport is that it's 12,000 feet long because it was used as a backup runway for the space shuttle in case it couldn't land at Cape Canaveral. If you want to learn more about the On a Wing and a Prayer true story and how it differs from the movie, check out our article over on historyvershollywood.com that's linked in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smoothly land your mouse pointer or finger on that like button and give it a click. And if you want more great content around the historical accuracy in true story movies, subscribe to our channel. Anchors away, my friends.